Say hello to the high. High pressure is very powerful across the northern British Isles at the moment. And I think it's getting kind of slightly missed out by the excitement, hype, whatever you want to call it, with regards to next week. Thanks for clicking on to the Thursday edition of Hogan's European Outlook. We have a 1046 millibar area of high pressure over the West Highlands at the moment. That is a relatively rare area of high pressure, by the way. And I thought to myself, it got me thinking, a few years ago, I can remember a 1050 millibar high being achieved somewhere in the UK. And lo and behold, that was in fact achieved back in January, on, the, on January 20th, uh, no, sorry, 19th, the evening of January 19th, 2020, when Heathrow actually recorded its highest pressure and it was, I believe, 1049 millibars, its highest pressure in some 300 years. But compared to the current situation, that area of high pressure was centered bang slap over the southwestern UK, where the pressure in a few sites did hit 1050 millibars. And there is an article on Weather Underground that talks about this particular event. So if you look back, this was actually an article written a uh, by Weather Underground, and it says, with only a few days left before the UK, it leaves the European Union a different kind of extreme pressure has suddenly hit London. According to the UK climatology ex expert Stephen Birch, Department of Meteorology at the University of Reading, the mean sea level barometer pressure, barometric pressure, should I say, at Heathrow Airport reached uh, 1049.6 millibars at midnight, which is pretty pretty exceptional stuff actually not only is this a record for heathrow beating 1047.3 in february 1964 but it is also the highest barometric pressure recorded in london in over 300 years of record keeping so um i do believe that the previous london record was 1049.1 millibars at kew gardens um that was achieved back in january 18th 1882 and uh the article also goes on to say that um, uh, the highest pressure was actually at Lis Liscombe Down in Devon, or Liscombe in Devon, of 1050.3 millibars. Now, that is only 3 millibars, 3.6 millibars, off the UK all-time record that was achieved at Aberdeen Observatory back in the 31st of January, 1902. So while it's not up there with, with that exactly, the 1046 millibar area of high pressure that we've got at the moment at the opposite end of the UK some three years later is pretty exceptional, uh, or pretty rare anyway, I should I say. And uh, I thought I, I would talk about that because, you know, a lot of attention is being diverted the next week, and I can understand to an extent why, but nonetheless... This is a, a, a fairly rare event with such strong high pressure. So this is a part of a tweet that I put out just a wee while ago showing the anomaly here at 500 millibars. So not only is it a very powerful surface high, it's also a very powerful high at 18,000 feet above our heads. And you can see here the, the kind of bright white colors representing a pressure anomaly of between 40 and 50 millibars compared to what would be considered normal. And if you look at the surface here, this is the mean sea level pressure anomaly. You can see here that the, the kind of white just at, at the center of the graphic here, the center of this anomaly uh, bullseye, if you will, you can see that the pressure is uh, well in excess of 40 millibars, higher than what you would uh, typically expect to see. So I just wanted to kind of just highlight that. Not cold, it's nothing. It's just the fact that the pressure is so strong you don't always see that in this part of the world. So before we continue with the video, be sure to like, share with your friends and family and hit that subscribe button. In yesterday's video, I talked about the MJO versus the stratospheric polar vortex. That is the longer term stuff, but I'm wanting to specifically look at the coming days and in the next week in particular. Let's do some model comparison with regards to the snow prospects, etc., etc. But be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in meteorology, interested in learning more about the big picture, why the pattern evolves the way it is. Uh, I try my very best to explain it in layman's terms. I know there's a lot of people here 
don't understand what the AO or the NAO is and some of the climatology and um, you know terminology with regards to various weather um, it lingo, if you will. I try my best to make it as, um, as, as straightforward as possible. But this is the current temperature profile across the British Isles. Not particularly cold by any stretch. We've got temperatures uh, hovering a few degrees above the freezing mark in the far south of the UK. Then a, a slight touch milder up through the Midlands into the north of England. And then we turn a little bit cooler further north across Scotland. The reason why it's not particularly cold, given the fact that we've got a 1046 high centred over the West Highlands, is because we've got a lot of cloud cover. That high kind of drifted north. It then allowed some of that moisture coming in around the wet, the, the wet east and southern flank of the, the high, and that's imported a tremendous amount of cloud cover and misty, murky conditions. <clears throat> so that layer of cloud essentially is stopping any kind of radiational cooling taking place at the moment here. Uh, we did have another cold night, um, not last night, but the night before, actually. Um, Aviemore's had back-to-back -back nights below minus 10, um, and I think next week could see um, a considerable uh, shot at the coldest conditions any time this winter so far. Bear in mind, I, mean, I think minus 12.5 is the coldest we've seen so far, and that was achieved back in the first few days of December. Europe, not as cold as it was as you can see, uh, we are starting to see cooler conditions now uh, become a little bit more focused again over Finland. Now, as that area of high pressure over the next several days does start to drift and, and depart to the west-northwest of the UK, we're going to see the trough deepen over Scandinavia again. So we are going to draw some very colder back into Scandinavia once again. And uh, we are eventually going to see that cold air getting driven south over the UK and Ireland as well. All the while, we're going to start to uh, cast our eyes to the southwest and see what's going on with regards to low pressure coming in off the Atlantic. So let's get right to that and see what's taking place. By the way, I looked at the ECMWF, the GFS, the ICON, the RPEGE, the UK MET model. None of the models had the pressure going uh, anything less than uh, 1044, 1045 millibars. So this high is actually slightly stronger than what the models suggested, which I thought was quite interesting. And <clears throat> incidentally, by the way, see that the occurrence of 1050 millibars over the southwestern UK. Very similar synoptic situation to what we've got at the moment. Deep in areas of low pressure over the western Atlantic, storm system exiting Newfoundland, bombed out off the east coast of Canada, that then pumped the high over the eastern side of the North Atlantic. And that's exactly what we're seeing at the moment here. In recent days, that has happened, allowed the high to really start to build. Remember, it connected up between the southwest down towards the Azores and southern Scandinavia. That high then linked up, transported that cold air out of Scandinavia, round the base of the, the, the high, westwards across Europe. And that has been the overall evolution in the last five or six days or so but we notice here a, quite a deep area of low pressure actually um over the central mid-atlantic here now as we play it through this is off the gfs you start to see that high little kind of just getting shoved slightly to the west allows a cold front to move through and remember we've got a world of cold air to the north if we look at the 850 temperatures here you can see exactly what i'm talking about so as that high then kind of just nudges subtly to the west allows that cold front in nothing exceptionally cold to start with by the way it'll take a little bit of time for the air mass to kind of feed that cold out of a uh, pretty far uh, north latitude here it will eventually uh, drift south here but remember the details very much remains open to question here we have the overall idea of what's going to take place High retrogrades to the, up towards Greenland opens the door. We've got the deep in trough over Scandinavia. So with the trough over Scandinavia, high over Greenland, we'll have an open door to coal coming in from the north here. But the finer details comes with what's going on over North America, the jet stream, uh, areas of low pressure developing. Remember, we've got a very displaced uh, jet stream way to the south. If I can pull up the jet stream... You can actually see how far south it is. It's a, a big 
meandering mess at the moment. We've got one arm that's splitting as it exits North America. One arm's going away up towards Greenland, the far north, and then the other arm is going south, undercutting across the mid-Atlantic and towards Iberia, France, etc., etc. So there's a lot of, uh, that block at the moment is acting like a stone in a river, with one branch acting, basically forcing the jet uh, to the north, jet to the south, you get the overall idea here. But if we play it through here, you can see what's taking place. If I go back to the overview chart, because it's not opening up uh, the um, the jet stream as I, I was hoping it would do. <clears throat> so just bear with me a wee second here. Sorry, folks. So by the time we reach the latter half of tomorrow into Saturday morning, that cold front is actually drifting southwards here. And all the while, as that cold front sinks south, you notice the area of high pressure that's been our friend for the last five or six days is now drifting up towards Iceland and well, not actually the Iceland, the North Atlantic up towards Greenland here. And then we've got this uh, continuation, this connection between the Arctic and the British Isles. And it takes a day or two for that cold air to reach our shores. Now, all the while, as we're seeing the cold air drifting south, we're keeping our eyes on this area of low pressure that is drifting and edging closer to the southern half of the British Isles. This is where the uncertainty comes because how strong is that area of low pressure? How much colder is getting driven south over the UK and Ireland here? Now, the latest run of the GFS indicates that we may have a few disturbances running that northerly flow that may beef up the snow potential, especially across the northern half of the British Isles. So before we even see any snow across the southern UK, there is a possibility that we see some of those kind of small scale um, you know, polar features, those polar lows that run that northerly flow into the UK and then increase the chance of seeing disruptive snow across the north. But it's then as we move towards the middle portion of next week, so this is a long way out still. It's pretty much a week still out, and, and there's high levels of uncertainty. But the overall idea is that this area of low pressure, depending on where it moves into the UK, is it further north, so south Wales, into the Midlands? Is it further south, to the south of England, over the Channel, possibly even northern France? It all depends on where that system moves in. On the northern flank, as it meets the colder, we see snow possibly disruptive snow breaking out on the northern flank, rain on the southern flank here because it's drawn in milder conditions. And you can see here one system moving in. We've got another area of low pressure actually that's moving in from the west here. But remember there's colder in place and there's the possibility of seeing disruptive snow but further north. Then we've got another feature moving in. And then you notice, like I've said in recent days, and I'm not saying it's a guarantee with the NJO, by the way, but it's interesting the GFS flattens out the flow very quickly. Now, the GFS is possibly too quick with this. Remember, this is only the 19th, 20th. But by talking about the MJO, it's me showing you the big picture of the potential of what may happen. I'm not saying it will happen, but I'm saying that there is going to be an interesting fight going on between with what's going on above our heads and what's going on uh, within the tropics and with the uh, with the MJO and, uh, and and where it's moving, how much influence it has in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere, for example. Let's have a look at the ECMWF here real quick. Because again, there's no point in pinpointing this and saying this and that because we just don't simply know what uh, what's going to happen next week. But there's that area of high pressure. It gets kind of deflated to the, to the west opens the door to that uh, that cold front moving in from the north here. Then as we progress through the second half of the weekend, we notice here that we've got the colder and colder air getting driven south. Snow showers, we don't really have much of a polar feature like the GFS indicates. Then we're keeping our eyes on that system coming in from the southwest. We do happen to have a feature that develops, if you notice here, over the outer Hebrides and increases the snow potential across the north. Then there's that area of low pressure. Notice this ECMWF is a little bit further south than what the GFS is. And then the ECMWF keeps the UK in the colder air for longer compared to what the GFS is indicating here, which is rather interesting. So let's have a look and see snow depth of the ECMWF. As we progress through next week, you notice the snow increases quite substantially. 
So that's it for today. I do appreciate you watching. Like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.